Let's see if this battery is hurricane proof. Let's open it up and see uh, how it did. We do uh, open this up to see what's inside and see if the water got in or not. But first, I need to catch those of you that uh, jump ship early. If you would please, before you leave, do four things for me. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Four 100% free things that uh, really benefit someone who's trying to just bring free content to you guys. Always want to say a big thank you to those of you that watch till the end of the videos. I really appreciate you, and you're welcome to wait uh, to do those four things till the end. All right, enough said. Let's get into this. Let's unbox this battery. Observation that helped me tremendously. I love the reinforced handles on the box. Super, super nice for something this heavy. So it is over 100 pounds. Got a nice packet of documentation. Uh, this appears to be some kind of uh, insulating uh, board. We've got uh, some terminal covers here, and a totally epic assortment of post bolts and hardware. This appears to be some kind of communication cable. And then we've got what appears to be some very strong metal standoffs. We've got the battery down in here. I'll tell you what, uh, this is a beast of a battery, all metal enclosure, these nice spring-loaded handles on the top. You see these little uh, mounting brackets there that uh, probably sit on those uh, metal posts we saw earlier. And this is the uh, business end of the device. We've got our positive over here, our negative right here, and then uh, we've got uh, a vent, uh, it says, right here, the on-off button, and then we've got uh, our RS-45 slash can and our can ports. So it kind of looks like that uh, cable that came with it. That would plug into these ports right here. So this battery doesn't come with any uh, smart displays or Bluetooth or anything, but this uh, LED indicator around the uh, button will indicate a couple of different things according to the manual. A steady on green means that it's uh, normal, standby charging or discharging. Flashing green means that we're under 20% state of charge. And then if it's alternating flashes between green and red, it's in protection status. And always red means that there's a, a failure inside. It has a capacity of just over 5 kilowatt hours, and it does have a 200 amp BMS. But it's rated for continuous discharge current of 100 amps, but it can surge up to 600 amps for one second. That's awesome. And then check this out. It is rated to IP66. That's an awesome rating. And they say you can hook up to 8 of these in parallel, which is pretty insane. And it does look like there's an optional uh, monitoring screen you can get uh, that uh, plugs into the communication ports. Guys, okay, something else I really, really like about these batteries are these terminal covers. So I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's like a little uh, groove on the plastic part of this. You might be able to see that kind of. Anyway, this just slides onto that and listen to how nice it clicks on. Both caps are just so, so nice. And you can obviously adjust them to uh, be whatever angle your wires are coming out. Let's do a quick uh, battery capacity test for this lead time golf cart battery. I've got uh, the Victron Smart Shunt uh, hooked up here. If we take a look here at the app, you can see I've zeroed everything out. Now I've kind of got stuff haphazardly wired here, but basically this uh, lead time battery comes up and uh, connects into my two distribution bus bars right here. And uh, we are powering my 12,000 XP uh, inverter. And in this case, I'm gonna be uh, taking the power from that inverter and dumping it into uh, this portable power station because we might as well uh, recycle the power. Now, I do have additional batteries here. All of these uh, batteries on this shelf, there's one down here on the ground, there's this wall mount battery, uh, but you can see the wall mount battery is off. And then notice that every one of these disconnects with the little uh, lever pointing down is also disconnected. So the only battery that's currently energizing this system is this Lee Time golf cart battery. So let's go ahead and uh, flip the 12,000 XP on. And then we'll go ahead and energize the load here. Uh, I've got it dialed in pretty darn close. Uh, we're negative 18 amps, 18.3 amps. An exact 0.2 C rate it would be uh, about uh, 20 amps because this is a 100 amp hour battery. So we're very, very close. I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, paused things just uh, temporarily here. So you can see we've pulled exactly 100 amp hours. Now we're losing voltage pretty quick, 43 volts. So it's not going to go too much longer, but we'll go ahead and let it run. I just want to show you that it made it to 100. It totally passed its capacity test and it has uh, protections built into it so it does not uh, discharge below a safe voltage so that uh, the battery cells inside don't die. All right, let's do some heavy load testing on this Lee Time golf cart battery. So I've got uh, some heavy duty battery cables with the Victron Smart Shunt hooked up. And uh, they come up here into my distribution system. We're going to use the shunt to measure the current. Once again, that's the only battery I've got to turned on out of all of the batteries I've got here. And it's currently running my EG4 12,000 XP inverter. 
that's coming over here to this load center. And then I've got uh, two separate 20 amp circuits uh, that we're going to be maxing out and uh, putting a heavy load on this battery. I know I won't be able to reach its 200 amp limit. Even if I turned everything on in my house and uh, ran this uh, 12,000 XP, I don't think I'd be able to reach the 200 amp limit. Might get close, but uh, anyway, uh, we're gonna at least put as heavy of a load as we possibly can uh, out here. So first I'm gonna start up this air conditioner and uh, we can see right here that that has put about a thousand watt. It's ramping up about a thousand watt load. It should ramp up to about 1100. And you can see running that air conditioner is a walk in the park. For the lead time battery, we're only pulling like 22 amps. Next, I'm gonna plug this power station in. That's pulling an additional 1000 watts. You can see we're up to 44 amps from the battery. Let's go ahead and crank this heat gun. Now I got a good heat gun going. We've got 78 amps being pulled. Let's add this electric heater to the mix. There we go, 122 amps. Piece of cake off this battery. No sweat. That's all I've got to throw at it, unfortunately, but uh, you can see it is running that without any issue whatsoever. It's actually something I really love about uh, these golf cart batteries is they pair actually really, really well with large inverters like this 12,000 XP. Why? This can pull up to 250 amps when it's running at full tilt from a 48 volt battery. Crazy but true, the giant wall mount battery from EG4 has a 200 amp BMS in it, which is identical to what the golf cart battery has. So technically you need a minimum of two of these wall batteries to allow the 12,000 XP to have the overhead that it needs in case it ramps up to full load. If you were to buy server rack batteries instead, those are only rated for 100 amps. So you would actually need three of those minimum to connect to a large inverter like the 12,000 XP. Well, for basically the same price as a server rack battery and substantially less the cost than a wall mount battery, you could just get two of these and have more than enough overhead to run the 12,000 XP. Granted, you're not going to have as much storage capacity as you would if you've got you know, two wall mount batteries. But if you're just trying to get a system off the ground and didn't uh, want to drop a ton of cash, buying two golf cart batteries to pair with your 12,000 XP or something like unto it will be substantially cheaper and still allow you to get the full potential out of your inverter than you know getting two wall mount batteries or three server rack batteries. And then you could certainly do uh, what I've uh, done here and pair it up, you know, later on after you've saved your money or whatever, you know, with a wall mount battery or whatever. So much of the time people just read the word golf cart and think that it's only good for golf carts. But I think these batteries are really, really good at home battery storage. All right, well, Lee Time claims that uh, this battery is IP66 water resistant, or in other words, uh, hurricane proof. So let's give it the good old hose test here. You may realize, see that I've actually got it connected up and I've actually got uh, this waterproof uh, charger uh, running on it. You might be able to see it's a little bright out here, but you can kind of see that that is flashing red. So uh, it's currently charging. Let's hit it good with some water here. Get these contacts good and wet. This end of the battery is going to be where it's the weakest. because It's got the ports and the vents and all kinds of stuff. Get around these screws really good. Again, the end here, this is gonna be where water gets in if it gets in anywhere. So you can see the charger is still running. So uh, no harm, no foul, at least uh, as far as the BMS is concerned. So let's uh, open it up and see what kind of water we got in there. Hopefully none. All right, it's still a little wet uh, here, but uh, let's open it up and see uh, how it did. All right, we'll open it carefully to not get any water dumped in it uh, from the lid here, excess water. So it is looking very, very dry in this case. If uh, any water intrusion would have happened, it would have come in probably over here where the penetrations are through the side. And uh, this is the vent in particular that uh, allows the uh, cells and whatnot to ventilate uh, easily. And if you uh, look carefully there, there is no sign of any water intrusion there whatsoever. All of the uh, connections here uh, seem to be tight and secure. Uh, you can see they've kind of globbed up uh, the glue on all of them. A massive BMS. That's my hand in comparison to it. It occupies the majority of the top space here. Very, very beefy and big. 
according to uh, what it says right here, each of these are eight gauge. So a total of four eight gauge wires. I don't know if uh, you can see, but the cells are actually encased in a very strong steel uh, framework. And uh, and then it's it's two rows, right? So there's one row there and then one row over here. It's jumped uh, by this uh, bus bar with a strain relief. And, uh, and then there's some steel uh, down in the middle there that, uh, again, compresses and uh, keeps these uh, cells from uh, touching each other and keeps them very securely fit uh, in the case here. Uh, Lead Time does typically make their own BMSs, and uh, this is no exception. That's the uh, tag right there, and uh, right over here is the actual uh, stuff printed on the PCB of the BMS. You can see uh, there's some insulating material between uh, every single one of the cells, and then you can also see here that uh, there's a temperature sensor underneath that glob of glue, underneath this glob of glue, underneath that glob of glue, and one more underneath those uh, negatives. It also appears there's one uh, going underneath the heat sink uh, under here. The other thing that's just a really nice attention to detail is notice that uh, like these cords right here, can you see that they're uh, wrapped in like this plastic curly stuff to keep it, keep the wires inside protected. Uh, where possible, they have wrapped uh, the power cables in this uh, like silicone uh, jacket. Everything is zip tied really, really nicely. Uh, these cables uh, that are going to the communication ports are nicely protected, as well as these wires right here. You can see that they're wrapped in stuff as well. So they've taken very good care to make sure that everything is wrapped and protected really, really well. So one of these golf cart batteries like this that is in the steel enclosure is going to be uh, more expensive than you know the same kind in like a bat, uh, plastic enclosure. But uh, the benefit to, that you get to, with something like this is better water resistance and uh, stronger durability. You also get the peace of mind of having your batteries inside a completely non-combustible, non-meltable case. I can't tell you how many times I've seen on online forums and different things, people whose power stations and batteries and whatnot get ruined, especially during hurricane season, because water got into the battery. Well, this might be your saving grace. It sure give you a little more peace of mind, I think, than you know a wall mount or server rack battery or something that has no IP rating whatsoever. IP66 is pretty darn close to perfect. Uh, it's just not quite set for full submersion. I wouldn't be surprised if this could survive being submerged a little underwater. Again, it's not rated to do that, so you never know, but uh, it, I think it has a way better chance of surviving and to continue to serve you, even if it gets flooded out, than any other battery option out there. And don't forget, you guys, that uh, you can get a screen to monitor what's happening in these batteries, as well as intercommunication between other batteries, hence the subtitle here of the Complex Edition. So you can hook up uh, multiples of these batteries together, they'll all talk to each other and uh, make sure that they're in sync and working well with each other. Okay guys, let me know down in the comments if you guys think this is a viable solution for what I'm talking about. If you live in a hurricane prone, flood prone area, is this something you would consider putting in your house? Let me know. Links to it are in the description as well, so be sure and check those out. And if you enjoy these kinds of real world tests, or at least as real world as I can get without uh, sticking it in a hurricane and uh, filming it. <laughs> Please do four things for me. Like, comment, share, subscribe. For 100% free things that uh, will allow me to bring this 100% free content uh, to you. I obviously go to more effort and uh, time than most people do, so I would appreciate it if you'd do those four things for me to help uh, compensate a little bit uh, for uh, the time and the effort uh, these videos take. Can't wait to talk to you guys in the comments some more. Be safe, and we'll catch you all next time.